Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, I had a major upgrade done to the 1994 Fleetwood Tioga Motorhome. I had two Max Air 6200K ventilation fans installed in the roof. These things will move a lot more air than the little 4-inch fans that came with the motorhome 25 years ago. I have a total of four roof vents in the motorhome. Uh, two of them are not powered and did not have vent fans to begin with. So these fans were installed in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. This model of the Max Air fan has 10 speeds. It has intake and exhaust on the fans and it has thermostat to help control the room temperature. They claim it, it moves over 900 cubic feet per minute and fits all standard 14 by 14 inch motorhome uh, RV roof openings. This is the manual open lid and I did not get the remote control version. The Max Air fan has a unique design that the rain guard is built in to the lid that raises up and down. There is no need for a supplemental vent cover to keep the rain out like I have on the, the two other vents that uh, do not have that feature. Uh, those have covers on the roof to keep the rain out. I had been thinking about installing a fan of this kind uh, for the last year or two and what spurred me to do it was, as you're seeing pictures here now, I actually had the rubber membrane roof on the motorhome replaced. I had been chasing a leak or two. She is 25 years old and I just got tired of it and decided to have the whole uh, membrane replaced and I got all new covers and then decided to get these Max Air fans to help with the ventilation inside the motorhome. Okay, now on to the reason why we're all here. My research into RV ventilation fans, these Max Air fans, hands down, are the preferred fan for many RV owners. There did appear to be some failure points on these Max Air fans, and it's my understanding these have been in production for about 10 years. Now, these failures seem to run the gamut. Uh, there was guys that reported runaway fans at full speed. People reported that the model that had the remote control that actually elevated the lid via remote control would fail. There is the intake and the exhaust mode of the fan, that the fan would get stuck on one of those. And if you were using the thermostat feature, it would get stuck on a set temperature and you could not change it. And it all came down to a circuit board failure on the fan. It turns out and seems that these Max Air fans can only take a maximum of 13.6 volts and then they start to have issues. Now when I had these fans first installed I was unaware of this issue. When I got it home and plugged the motorhome into shore power the fans would come on for a short period of time and then shut off. If I unplugged from shore power the fans ran just perfectly with no problem. It turns out that when the trickle charger that keeps the house batteries charged in my motorhome kicks on, at the very end of that charge there is a boost and that is upwards to 14.8 or maybe even 15 amps to top off the batteries. At that point in time, the model of fans, the, the year of fan that I have, apparently there was some kind of a circuit breaker in the control board and the fan shut off. People that had older fans with older control boards, and it's my understanding there is a new version of the control board out, their fans would not shut off. So they just happily, merrily do whatever they're doing until what a certain time that the fan uh, received too much voltage and then something burned out. It's also my understanding that a lot of solar panels are pushing 15 to 15.6 volts and that could ultimately lead to a max air fan circuit board failure. So what's a guy to do? Well there's a thing called a buck converter that you can install on the fan. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you that now. That will dial down the voltage going to the fan from your RV power source down to 12 volts. This converter hooks in between the RV power wires and the fan power wires and then you can dial the voltage down to 12 volts. Here in this picture and remember in many motor homes the black wire is the power wire and the white wire is the ground wire. So on the right side of this picture I have the power 
from the RV coming into the circuit board and it's attached via little screws and lugs. There are buck converters out there that require soldering. I purchased this one on Amazon. There is a link in the video description to this converter. It's about 20 bucks. Uh, I had to have two, one for each fan. Anyway, you have the RV power coming in from the right side and then the fan connected on the left side. You can see that the circuit board is marked. It has, uh, on the left side there, you will see three spots. It's upside down, VO, voltage out positive. That's the black wire on the very first lug on the left-hand side. And then ground on the white wire on the corresponding lug on the left side. And I'll show a picture here real quickly of the right side where the power comes in. So here is the quick step-by-step -step procedure that I followed based on a forum that I found and the link to that forum is also in the video description. My fans were switched with a rocker switch where most people's fans are probably direct wired. So I had the ability to cut the power, the RV power to the fan. But if you do not have a switched fan, you will want to kill the power or at least find out what fuse runs the fan you could pull that will give you no power to the circuit that you're working on. Very important, always kill the power before you start. Remove the four screws that hold the trim piece to the ceiling. The round screen is removed by twisting the four tabs that hold it in place and then drop the screen down. Remove the screw in the black knob that raises and lowers the lid. You now have access to the four screws that attach the panel that the circuit board is residing in from the main frame of the fan. If you remove all four of these screws, a spacer that resides in between the spot between this panel and the main frame at the point where the knob that raises and lowers the lid will fall out. And there, I just had a heck of a time trying to get that back in there. So I did not replace that on my first attempt. On this attempt here in the bathroom, I just removed the three screws other than the one next to the knob that raises and lowers the lid. That one I left in place. I did loosen it just a little bit, but that should give you clearance to complete the rest of the procedure. Assuming that you are not uh, installing this regulator as a matter of installing the fans, when the fans were originally installed, the wires were ran in a configuration that allowed the trim piece to clear the wires. You're gonna have to reroute the wires from the outside to the inside of the body of the fan in order to install it in one of the corners as we will see here next. After you have rerouted the wiring, we will connect the regulator and place it next. With no power provided to the circuit, connect the black power wire, the power source from the RV, to the first VIN lug as you see on the right hand side of the picture. Connect the white ground wire to the first GND ground lug as you see on the right hand side of the picture. At this time you're going to want to take a voltmeter and on the left hand side of the picture here which is the voltage out going to the fan you will want to connect that voltmeter to those lugs to check the voltage that the regulator is providing to the fan. At this time you will reconnect the power source and this might take two or three hands here. Uh, hold the voltmeter probes to the proper positive and negative lugs on the left hand side of the picture here and check the voltage that is going through the regulator. If it is higher than what you desire and I believe by default both my regulators were set at 12.8. But anyway, I wanted to dial that down directly to 12 volts. Taking a miniature screwdriver like from an eyeglass kit, the little brass knob that I'm highlighting here with the arrow, you turn that clockwise in order to drop the voltage and counterclockwise to increase the voltage. I set mine at exactly 12 volts. Disconnect the power source to the regulator one more time and we will hook up the wires from the fan 
to the other side of the voltage regulator as I show here. Black to VO, positive out, so that's voltage positive out, black wire, and then the white wire is to the ground lug. Using a small piece of Velcro, I attach the voltage regulator up into the corner of the body of the fan, making sure that it doesn't interfere with any of the mounting screws or the fan itself. Kind of tuck the wires up inside there so it's not interfering with anything. Then you can put back into place the cover that the fan control board is on. Remembering that on my second attempt here, I left the one screw in near the knob and there I had plenty of room to tuck that voltage regulator up in there and get everything cleared and then inserted the screws and tightened that cover back down over the body of the fan. At this time you can reconnect the power source and check the fan to make sure everything works properly and if everything is uh, good and cleared you have no wires rubbing on the fan everything is cleared and set into place now it's just a matter of reinstalling all the peripheral parts in the reverse order that you took them out put the screen in and then the uh, trim piece now a note on the trim piece and I'm, I don't have a picture of that I'm sorry but since we had to reroute the wires from the outside of the body of the fan to the inside of the body of the fan in order to nest that voltage regulator up in the corner, I had to cut a notch in the trim piece so the trim piece would clear where the wires came out through the ceiling now that the wires are rerouted from the outside of the body to the inside of the body. Okay, that's it. I highly recommend that you Go to the link that I provide in the video description to the forum where a gentleman lays this out in text and with other pictures. Uh, you do have to become a member of this forum in order to view the pictures. Go to that forum page. It's about five or six pages long. There's a bunch of stuff in there where guys are just talking back and forth. But he has some really, really good information in text if you prefer to follow along with text along with maybe my video. But anyway, that's how you install that voltage regulator that will step down the voltage that is coming from your RV down to 12 as the max air fan will only take 13.6 before things start happening bad and that will uh, prevent that from happening for a, a longer period of time. All right, guys, thanks for coming along for the ride, and we'll see you next time.